Well, 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 welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Building Character, where we usually take our favorite RPG games and build characters or do character creations uh, to show not just the mechanics of the build, but also to give you a little taste and flavor of whatever that particular RPG is that we're working on, a role-playing game. Uh, today, because uh, recently uh, Morden Kinnan's, uh, Morden Kinnan's Tomb of Foes, Morden Kinnan's Tomb of Foes came out. Uh, this is the regular edition, and this is the Hobby Store exclusive edition, which is really nice. Um, and having gone through it and looked at it and checked out all of the bad guys that are in there, um, I was like, hey, you know what we haven't done in a while? We haven't done an unboxing. So today we're going to do an unboxing uh, of some Monster Menagerie Icons of the Realms by WizKids. Uh, there's 44 figures in the set. They come in these cool little blind boxes. And uh, yeah, so we're going to build some encounters based off of these blind boxes. So kind of break them open, show you what's inside, and then we're going to build little encounters. It's a lot of fun. And uh, so there, so, and you guys can kind of help me be like, ooh, this would be a better group to put together. And if you've watched our previous episodes of Building Character, you know that we've just finished some Star Wars stuff, but before that we did a whole party of D&D characters. And so the, here's the main scenario, just so you know. The party has gotten rooms at the Gemstone Pub and Tavern, an inn, pub and inn. And they have to journey to the outhouse. And at the outhouse, they have to fight their way to it because nothing's safe ever. So we're going to build the encounters <laughs> around the, the outhouse, the outhouse of doom. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were just kidding when we were joking about this before the show. No. Why would we kid about such no. things? <laughs> All right. Keep so, it classy. <laughs> so the first box, let's see what we find in here. We've got bubble wrap. And inside the bubble wrap, we have the first creature, ooh, is a knoll. I like knolls, so the knoll will go there as a guardian of the outhouse of doom. Also, we have, let's see here, hmm, a kobold. And of course, you can't ha have uh, an outhouse of doom without a kobold guardian as well. The third miniature in this particular box. Ooh, is a gray, it looks, yeah, a gray slod. And a gray slod could abs absolutely be in the outhouse and comes out of the muck. Wah! But no, he's going to be right over here. Our gray slod. The outhouse of doom. What a great idea. <laughs> and finally, in this particular blind box, we've got, it looks to be a cyclops. So we'll call that one... Rick as well, like me, Rick. And there we go. The other guardian of the outhouse of doom. Whoa, that's pretty, so there's our first group and we'll interchange them as we unbox more to get a better one or even add to this one. So what do you guys think so far? Is it as ridiculous as we all are, are assuming it to be? It's completely ridiculous. My yeah. question is, is why are these creatures drawn to this outhouse like why are they just like lurking around it that's what I wanted like the people in the chat to figure out for us right some somebody's had to have done something right they put something there to make it worth yeah, food poison hits the village there's only one outhouse <laughs> <laughs> that is so good all right let's take a look at the next box and again these are really good if you want to find out more about the whiz kids miniatures um they're Pre-painted line of menag um, monster menageries uh, by I or the icons of the realms. Uh, just go to whizkids.com and check them out. Oh, here we go. What do we got? What do we got? It looks like. Geez, this is a. I'm gonna just show off the big, the big, big guy here first. This one may not be a uh, um, someone that would be guarding an outhouse so much. 
it, uh, it looks like it's a Titan of some sort. Oh, an Empyrean. So this, the, you know, the Cyclops is huge already, right? But look at this guy. He's super huge. I don't know. Maybe he's going to be back here just in case someone gets through and he just needs to knock the house off the top there. You know, he's the tipper. He's the guy who, who tips the the... the the uh, the outhouse over. As no, a Rick, joke. he's the doorman. <laughs> Next, we've got. Okay, well, this looks more like a hero, a gnome wizard. All right, so we got a little gnome wizard. I feel like the gnome wizard, because it's gemstone pub. Yeah. Might be one of the pub's, uh, like, um, owners. But we'll put the gnome wizard down here as a potential. Like, dang it. Our guests need to use this. <laughs> he, he's there to check the privy. <clears throat> Ooh, another knoll. This looks like a, a knoll flesh uh, crawler, um, gnawler. This one has like um, a flail with two chains and spiked balls on it. We'll put him up there. Whoop, oh, he's been drinking. Drinking the uh, toilet water. There we go. Yeah, this is going to be the outhouse that nobody's going to want to go to, you know? There we go. Next in this second box is. Oh, wow. This is creepy looking. It is a bearded devil. So it's, uh, you know. Got a short spear, but it has like snakes that are like it, its beard. So even demons and devils are coming out to defend the outhouse. Maybe a gate opened up inside the outhouse. I was gonna outhouse. say, I think this is a portal. It's a tar. It's a. It's an evil Tardis. Yeah. <laughs> to somewhere. It's an evil Tardis that's unleashing all these bad monsters out into the world. All right. So our third box. Oh wow. It appears that almost every one of these is going to have some sort of uh, colossal figure in it. Okay, third box is going to have... I don't know if... If anybody ever played the original uh, video game Neverwinter Nights, and you could build your own dungeons, this would be something that I would have built. <laughs> it's like a large opening, small tavern, outhouse out in the middle of nowhere, and just monster, 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 as the... Uh, so we have what appears to be a, a mud method, a little mud demon. Natasha says a blue portal of demons. A blue portal of demons? Yeah, I should paint this to look like a TARDIS. You, you need to. Now this is the lesser known follow-up sequel to Hot Tub Time Machine. It's Outhouse Time Machine. <laughs> Outhouse? Someone says portal potty. It's the portal potty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one... It's, That's the winner. It's literally why I love this community. Uh, <laughs> a sturge. All right, so a sturge is a little winged creature. It actually looks like a fairy dragon. I think they got this wrong on the base because it, it looks more like a fairy dragon. But it's so tiny, you probably won't be able to really capture it on the camera so much. Whoop. It's just flying off in its own thing. Which one is it? Okay. It's a little, little, little tiny thing right there. Baby, baby. Yeah, that little, that little bugger. What is that supposed to it's be? It's supposed to be a sturge, but here, let me see if I can adjust the humidity. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So, but it looks more like a, fa a fairy dragon. All right. Ooh, nice. It stick, it, that one sticks around because of the smell. Yes. Uh, a gibbering <laughs> mouther, which would absolutely come out of a uh, portal potty. <laughs> Good dress. It's a Golgotha. <laughs> Just thinking the same thing. Yep. Oh, look at another hill, another giant. And this one looks like he's carrying a big old pack of poo. Wow. You know, maybe the the hill giant is a um, like a sanitary engineer, and is walking off with the poo 
from the from the outhouse back here. It's like I've cleaned it out. Caught in the battle. Natasha says, I love that this turned into the D&D monster potty party. That's right. There's something mystical about the, the portal potty, and they all want to protect it, or it's just popping them in. Like, maybe this is exactly how monsters spawn in the realm of Dungeons & Dragons, is this mystical portal potty that just kind of teleports all over the, the realm, and monsters kind of spill out of it, and that's how they populate the, the local areas. There you go. Yeah, I imagine it. this place also, like, it has, like, right now our set piece is, like, rocky, but I'm imagining, like, a swamp or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like the, the de like a, if a deity just had a really great sense of humor. Yeah. And it's like, hmm, how are we going to populate this planet with evil beings to give our adventurers challenges? And then, of course, you've got Loki, a, por a portal potty. Brilliant. All right, so this looks like a mesoloth, which is kind of like a beetle spider creature. But it's a demon of some sort. The, oh, oh, man, they've been, oh, they've been drinking. The mesoloth. <clears throat> and next, again, these are part of the Icons of the Realms Monster Menagerie 3, which are available at your local game store right now so you can pick them up um an, again right out of the the portal potty we got another uh gibbering mouther which is uh you know our golgothans of this thing i'm just gonna put this one over here doesn't need to interrupt can't have more than one gibbering mouther at, at the same location and then a Oh, a magman, or a magmin. So it's like a little halfling-sized lava creature. I'll put him on the spinner too, right there. Cause that's some hot. That's a hot dumpster fire of a portal potty. <laughs> Somebody light a match. Right. <laughs> and then finally, on this box, so. This one, again, I don't think he's gonna be so much because he's even bigger than the other one. How wow! This guy, and it's a—it looks like a storm giant. Yeah, it's a—it's a new storm giant fig. Um, I'm just gonna. There we go. That guy. <laughs> he's huge, mungus. You can't go wrong. He looks ridiculously cool. The storm giant. You could almost. Based on these uh, monsters that we're pulling here, with the hill giant, the the cyclops, the uh, empyrean, the storm giant, if there's other life, there's a frost giant stuff. You could almost put together the entire um, uh, G one, two, and three modules against the against the giants' actual uh, modules, which are so good. So we're on to our what is this? Our fifth. But movie maker commented Mesoloth equals dung beetle. Dung beetle. <laughs> All right, we did get another, looks like another giant. And it is oh. a frost giant. Also, Craig says, look at page 130 in Mordekane's Mordekane's Ghost. 130? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go out, do that real quick. And Sarah asks, are these from WizKids? They are from WizKids, so you can find them. Uh, if you want to learn more about them, you can just go to wizkids.com. All right, 130. Let's see what he's directing us to go peep out. Demons. The Alkalith. Bulizo. I'm wondering if... Uh, it explains how a portal to the abyss can be opened in the outhouse. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, does someone have to leave an offering? I'm thinking so, but yeah, that's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> ties in, everything ties in. All right, so these are always some of the funnest uh, uh, building characters is where we get to unbox some new product and see what's going on in there. And uh, we got a goblin, 
a wee little goblin with a torch. So I'm gonna pull the storm giant down, put the goblin right there by the uh, fire, the magman. There we go. And this portal potty is just working hard. It's called the Alk, the Alkyth. The Alkyth. Alkyth, yeah. And then we've got a, a Triton fighter. So Triton, like a merman fighter. Um, I feel like the, this particular character would be another potential owner of the Gemstone Pub, but we'll put him right here so you can get a good look at him. That's pretty cool. He looks great, He's like a Aquaman-ish looking character. And now we've got, oh no. This is the, I can't read it, it's the Quadrone. So back in the day, the D&D uh, &D, uh, came up with these creatures that were very much um, geometric shapes. And so here's the Quadrone. It's just this box with wings with a bow. It's pretty interesting. But they had a whole bunch of these type of creatures, so maybe we'll find more in here. The Quadrone. I don't know why, but I love that character. Already? Yes. What? It's just interesting Are they looking. Strong? I want that for my desk. They can be. Yeah. All right, next. Ooh, hold on. this? Oh, Craig was saying they root on doors and windows and open portals to the abyss. Okay. Alpha, yeah, they did look like a fungus. Yeah. Yeah. So it would grow on the portal. So. I mean, it would grow on the outhouse. <sighs> Whisk kids, I just got to tell you, this miniature is sick. <laughs> All right. If you like uh, fire giants, they're already cool anyways, but check out this fire giant dreadnought. So this thing is a giant, but he has two huge spiked shields that he that he wields. How ridiculously cool is that? All right, I take it back. He's a doorman. Yeah, this guy. Yep, he is like, oh, you got it. Nope, can't come here. We're going to take the Cyclops away. Sorry, Cyclops, you got fired. There's our new guardian of the portal potty. <laughs> That is crazy. All right, let's see what else we got here. I'm loving these. The club bouncer. The club bouncer. <laughs> yep. That guy? Yep. All right. Uh, this no next one looks like a miniature beholder. It's a gazer. I'm gonna, he's, he's a gazer. I'm going to put him right up there. It's just a tiny little, tiny little button. Like round beholder esque. Yeah, I can barely see him. He's right, right there. It's a gazer. Next, we've got the Akuatoa, which is kind of an, like another aquatic uh, uh, bad guy. They're like uh, fish, but every once in a while, Akuatoa will give spawn to. Uh, or no, that's a Sahagin. Never mind, another fish creature. But they give birth to some that almost look just like sea elves. The purple one right there is your Kuotoa. And next, we've got. Man, I can't believe these giants. They're ridiculous. All right, this one is. Ooh, a were boar. And as we all know, boars and. Uh, stuff like the route, route around in the mud, just root in the mud. So a werebore, like a werewolf, but a boar creature. Um, let's see. I'm going to take this one down. Put the werebore up. There yeah, with the little club next to the dung beetle looking creature. <laughs> Dreadnought is page 147 in Volo's Guide. Oh, Volo's Guide to... Do I have Volo's here? I think I do. Let me 
If I do, we'll... Yeah, I can't tell. I do not have Xan Xanthar's Guide. Yeah, I don't have Volos in the stack today. Dang it. All right. Okay, we got another Frost Giant. There we go. So who wants a Frost Giant? One of you guys out there? Guys or gals watching today? You want a Frost Giant? I think I should send you a Frost Giant. Somebody wants this? Um, hashtag uh, Frost Giants for Life. If you guys uh, put in the comments, hashtag Frost Giants for Life, uh, I'll send one of those to you guys. To somebody. One of you will win it. Can you set it out uh, so I can pick it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll put it up here on. There you go. There we go. There we go. Someone wants a frost giant. Hashtag frost giants for life. Another gazer. I'll throw that gazer into that mix too. <laughs> the baby. Yeah, the wee gazer. There we go. That's what the frost giant like. Come on, wee gazer. <laughs> wee gazer. Wee gazer. <laughs> there you go. Frost giants for life. <laughs> Okay, we got a vampire spawn, a little, it looks like a barmaid who's become a vampire. That's kind of cool. Um, I'll put him over here, put her over there. Yeah, she looks great. Like I said, it kind of looks like a, a barmaid turned vampire. Hashtag gazer, <laughs> hashtag we gazer for life. <laughs> Uh, we got another Koatoa, but this one um, has with a whip. So we have two Koatoas, so that's pretty cool. I'll put him down here. And then we're on to the last box, everybody. But after that, then we're going to take these and kind of pair them up to make better little encounter groups. Mm -hmm. Looks like they have a miniature of me in here. <laughs> the mouth of Grolantor. Look at this guy. It's like they sculpted me just before lunch. Oh gosh! <laughs> Give me the foods. <laughs> He's even got like meatballs in his hands. He does. It's like food. Oh, spaghetti. It's like he raided the, the whatever was cooked at the Gemstone Pub, but now maybe he would actually be the one. Maybe that's why all these have spawned around the portal potty, because the, it's like we can't let him use the portal potty. It'll destroy the, the you know, the universe. Nick says mouth of Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and Shane says beefcake for life. <laughs> beefcake for life. Another uh, vampire. There's another vampire spawn. And we got... Three more miniatures here. Look at that. That's crazy. Another vampire spawn. Put this one up here as well. And next is ooh, this looks like another it looks like another gray slot, but if you look at the first gray slot that we got. Okay, I'm gonna put them up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the Frost Giant for Life back here in the corner, with the Vampire Chick. This gray slot is the first one we pulled. Pretty cool. This gray slot has a fireball or uh, some sort of flame burning hand spell going off or something. That's pretty slick. What's up, Patrick? Hey, Patrick. You should uh, type in hashtag fr um, Frost Giant for Life to enter to win the Frost Giant that we, we, we pulled two out of here. Someone's going to win one. And a wee gazer is going to be a part of that. Um, and then, of course, our final miniature is the Death Dog, a two headed uh, hound. The Death Dog. So that's pretty cool, too. Lots of cool miniatures in this. Uh, there's 
44 in total as part of this set. This is Icon D and D Icons of the Realms Monster Menagerie Three. So I'm going to read the little blurb on the back here. It says. Uh, collect all 44 figures. Monster Menagerie 3 brings you a vast array of all new sculpts representing challenges for your heroes to overcome and allies to fight by your side. Though their power is great, fear not, for in this set you will find new allies as well, such as the legendary Nameless One and the powerful Dragonborn. No Dragonborn. We didn't pull any Dragonborn. That's crazy. Will you stand your ground as the fearsome Goblin Hucker throws an army your way? Maybe you will find your... Fortune has been reversed as the cackling Nilbog seems to shrug off even the mightiest of strikes. Will your heroes rise to the challenge? Uh, based on what we pulled here, we're going to have to have some really high-level heroes to fight against all these giants and, <laughs> yeah. and everything, because there's a lot of big, big toughs here, especially that fire giant. Look at that fire giant again. That is ridiculous. It's right here. It's the fire giant Dreadnought, and it's ridiculous. He's got... These shields, I'm going to show you what it looks like from the back right there. Dave, Look at that Dave guy. Taylor says, I want to know what the gazer underneath the fire giant, frost giant is gazing at. Uh, I can't talk <laughs> about such things. It'll chill your, chill your mind. But yeah, this guy, I love this miniature. It's like I would want to have him like standing there be, as these are like representing, maybe looking like walls. So it just all spiked walls, but all of a sudden he comes running out. You know, like it's a uh, fake wall, comes running out and starts just bashing your heroes into the wall. Yeah, it's so good. I love it. That guy's sick. All right. So, all the miniatures that we pulled out of the eight blind boxes, we've got all these big guys right here. And the other frost giant. Oh, oh, the gazer, the wee gazer, no! All right. So all these big miniatures. So you hit almost all, all of them except, I think we got the hill giant, frost giant, fire giant. This isn't the giant. Storm giant. I think the only uh, class of giant we didn't get is a stone giant. Uh, as far as like your regular core giant kin. Um, then we got, like I said, we got the Empyrean, um, who just looks like him and the Frost Giant would buddy up, and these other two, um, the Mouth of Rick, or as they call it, the Mouth of Grolanthor, and the Cyclops, which are pretty cool. And then <clears throat> we got this Gnome Wizard, little tiny guy, and uh, the Boar, were the Wereboar. The Nezaloth, but I'm trying to think of like if we were to actually put together a, a true, let's just say, let's, the Porta Potty, Portal Potty truly does have some reason that there's some monsters around it. What would be the most likely monster thing going around the Portal Potty? So I, I would be inclined to say that. Maybe the 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 werebore would probably be amongst the ones I, I'm thinking of choosing would be the most challenging because he's a were creature, you know. So I think the werebore would be one of them. Also, quick question: Patrick is wondering how many boxes did we open? We opened eight. Okay, eight, eight boxes. Eight boxes, and in each box we got one of these giant uh, colossal figures. And. Also, does the storm giant have lightning coming out of his hand? He does. Yeah, I'll put him, I'll put him right up here so you can get a really good look at him. Yeah, he's a slick miniature. And, I mean, you can't even call it a miniature. If you look right next to him, or, or there's this a Kotoa. This is ginormous. It's great scale. But, all right, so back to our portal potty defenders. Mini Painting Studio says the wizard drank a bad potion, causing his bowels to open a portal, causing the monsters to come through and out through oh, the outhouse. Oh, so, so bad. So bad. And good. Uh, I think that the gnolls would be like the front line to the defense. 
with the kobold kind of being would like hiding off into the rocky area over here to, to be like the first the first one to notice and and sound the alarm you know got somebody coming based on that the only other one like I wouldn't put any giants as portal defenders uh, in this it just doesn't seem right truly right um I kind of feel like once they get to the portal potty, you know, I'm, it wouldn't be in there. You would have to face off against the gibbering mouther. Yeah. You know, so the gibbering mouther would be right there, where the portal potty was, whoop, and that would be like your final little confrontation. And then uh, the other thing was we did get three. Oh, and the goblin. The goblin is could also be there to. You know, in, in case he has to, he's got a torch there, and in case he has to, he's ready to light that hot dumpster fire up. <laughs> but there's also, like like I said, there's three vampires, female vampires. Um, two of them have, like, these red skirts, and the other one uh, is a... No, they're all vampire spawns. They're just different paint schemes on them. Um, it's almost like the three brides of da Dracula. Which is kind of cool. Uh, the Empyrean is a celestial titan. Yeah, he looks like it. But the thing is, is he's not. That storm giant even makes dwarf, you know, makes him look tiny, which is amazing. I love, I love a nice sculpted giant figure, and those definitely fit the bill. And if you were to go back and look at all the other monster menageries that have come out uh, and other Whiz Kids product with painted miniatures, there's always giants. You, you can find different sculpts on a lot of the, like the hill giant, the stone giant, um, the frost giant. There, I think that there's a female uh, cloud giant. Oh, there's another one, cloud giant uh, that wasn't in here. Um, but yeah, and don't forget, if you're just tuning in, uh, ha type in hashtag frost giant for life and someone will get this and they will also get a wee gazer. There he is, the wee gazer. We'll send that off to you as well. And what a, what a great pairing right there. The the gazer flying around and sending back uh, information to the frost giant to let him know what's up ahead. So yeah, the, the frost giant and wee gazer. <laughs> just so you know, it doesn't say wee gazer on the bottom, it just says gazer. But he's definitely a wee gazer. Oh yeah, he's a wee, <laughs> this one here's wee gazer. It's pretty cool. Now, I'm pretty interested in this we, hill giant. I was gonna say, we should think of a scenario for the giants. Yeah. Like, minus the mm -hmm. portal potty. <laughs> yeah, minus the portal potty. We'll just shimmy that out the way real quick. Move all these guys out of the way. Now, if we were to build a scenario, because this is building character, and we were to build a scenario around the giants, which we have Let's say we're using both, both frost giants, the hill giant, the fire giant dreadnought, man, that guy, again, whew, that's ridiculous. And of course, the storm, or yeah, the storm giant. So of course, the storm giant is the leader, it would be the big bad guy in, in his castle on top of a hill, a mountain, or in his stronghold, where there's always a clouds around it and then lightning striking all the time. And he's up there observing the lands below even his sword is kind of like a lightning bolt uh, in shape, which is kind of neat. But he's up there. He's got his doorman. The dreadnought is literally the doorman. The frost giants are his personal guards, right? And the hill giant, as all hill giants should be, based on, uh, you know, you think about their intelligent levels as they go down, and the hill giants and stone giants aren't the smartest of giants is literally the, the one that goes down and forages and salvages and brings stuff back to her, to her sire, who she is secretly loathing and wants to destroy. So she, gets, she could potentially be duped by some adventurers to carry them back in her sack, on her back, it, thus bypassing the, the guard and immediately being presented to the storm giant king 
and combat ensues. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Jeremy also says Giants five-year family reunion. All the clans <laughs> get together for a homie barbecue. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is this like a convention? Is this like Giant Con? It is Giant Con, and they're awesome. Look at, I mean, look at me. I'm a grown man playing with, with inanimate dolls. How cool is that? <laughs> I love it. And what would be really cool is actually, you know, one of the great things about miniatures is how uh, when you play a, a role-playing game, it does, it does help with combat, but it also helps with the immersion. You know, a lot of people may not be able to theater the mind's eye a scenario that a dungeon master is trying to parlay to them. So they would get a better vis visual by using miniatures on the table, and a lot of gamers and D&D &D, uh, and role players use miniatures as, as they're meant for. Uh, but to use them to, to immerse your players into their scenarios just is an amazing thing. And when they are beautiful miniatures, and WizKids has done a, such a great job with these pre-painted miniatures, um, it, it, it goes even further. And if you don't uh, like um, not painting them yourself, you can always do repaints on these or just get uh, the unpainted yeah, that's um, what Patrick was saying line. earlier. He likes the unpainted ones. Yeah, the unpainted ones are ridiculously good, too. So, you know, you could repaint these to your own liking. Like, for me, I think I would almost repaint the Frost Giants because... The color? Yeah, because these look almost aqua or some sort of aquamarine greenish, right? When I would want them to be more, like, blue, like because that's what frost giants are supposed to be, have, like a bluish skin, to give them like a, that ice look. So I'd probably repaint those with, with, with blue. And then this um, fire giant has the red eyes, but um, fire giants tend to have, like it almost, they almost have like a charcoal black skin. And this one has a light, like teal blue. So it's like, ah, no. <laughs> Patrick says blue and white for the frost giants. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the storm giant just absolutely fits the bill. He's ridiculously good. And the hill giant looks just like a hill giant should, ready to go and do their bidding of their, of their uh, storm giant leader's call. Yeah, we bought the cardboard Pathfinder minis. <laughs> Which are great too. If you guys like the the Pathfinder uh, miniatures that are just the flat cardboard, those are those are great. They help. Everything helps uh, if you want to use the immersion style um, when it comes to adding miniatures to your game. There's another company called Arc Knight that has these beautifully uh, like clear plastic flat miniatures, but it has amazing artwork on those. So you get the same uh, a front and a back in their artwork, and they come on. You know, you can add them to these little discs so you can use them. They're, they're beautiful. Arc Knight's really, really good. Uh, the Pathfinder pre-painted ones are also good. We have some of those laying around the office. We'll probably do an unboxing of those uh, around the time when we do some uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition stuff. We'll see about that. But other than that, I think this is going to be a short day today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got some other good stuff coming up, but before we get moving on into the next thing, uh, next program, check out at your local game store, your local comic shop, uh, the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games is out next week. And this is what it looks like right there. So you can pick this up. Uh, myself and Carrie Wood uh, had a hand in it. I literally have a hand in it. If you look in the back here, uh, there's an advertisement right there. Johnny and I had a hand in this advertisement. Johnny's holding the money. I'm holding the book. So we had a hand in it. It's pretty good. Ah, ah, ha, ah. Bad jokes. Ah, ha. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, go pick it up. Uh, like I said, at your local comic or game store. If if they don't have it, if they did not order these through Diamond or Alliance, you can uh, you can order it direct through GemstonePub.com. So uh, so if you notice, I said you know Gemstone Pub was the pub. So GemstonePub.com, and you can pick up a copy of. The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. It is not a price guide. It is a how to find, where to find, and what games um, on the tabletop market, uh, in the secondary market, are holding value and gaining value. 
uh, which is really cool. And uh, there's some really cool interviews. We've got some. We got an interview with Peter Atkinson, who is uh, used to be um, the CEO and founder of Wizards of the Coast. Uh, we've got Matt, Matthew Mercer from uh, Critical Role, Elisa Teague, um, our good our good friend uh, Dave Taylor did a little article in it. Um, Leona. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> like, Dave. A um, lot of different uh, companies' games are featured in here. Uh, let's see who else we got. Alan Nains, who is a, a big time board game collector, and if you didn't know already, uh, Alan Nains is one of the individuals behind such games as Fallout at uh, Bethesda Games. So you can check him out and what he has to say about the tabletop industry and board game collecting in the book here. So please go check it out. We would love to have you guys have a copy of that on your shelf and in your hands. So it's really good stuff. Other than that, that this has been Building Character. Uh, what? Your paint and take? Paint and take? Oh, yeah. So I'm doing that. Johnny's Johnny on the spot. All right, so you see right here, paint and take at Origins. I will be painting on Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. with Realmsmith TV uh, with the, uh, at the Vallejo booth. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. We will be painting Beholders from the WizKids uh, uh, Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures line, the pre-primed, the pre unpainted uh, miniatures. It's going to be a lot of fun. And look at all the other individuals that are going to be there uh, painting as well um, at different times of the week. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we would hope that you guys tune into Realmsmith TV during that time. And this next Thursday at 2 p.m. for Painting Happy Little Minis, Jason from Realmsmith will be on Painting Happy Little Minis with us live from Origins, and who knows, we'll find something at Origins to paint and have a good time and make some really cool things happen. So stay tuned for that. That's a lot of information. Anything else, Johnny? Uh, I think that's it. All right. So on that note, thanks for joining us for Building Character, the unboxing edition. And uh, we will be back real soon. And Origins next week. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Got to watch all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm Rick, Building Character, and I'll see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.